is always a joy to talk to you about one thing or another. But once again, I would like to thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for the subscriptions. And thank you for each and everything that you do. I receive a number of calls seeking for my advice. That is one of the things which energizes me into coming up with more videos. And today I want to go into the world of law. When we talk about law, it is important for each and everyone to know about the laws that govern his or her given area. And it doesn't matter which country you are in. But what is important for you to note is that some laws cut across jurisdictions, laws cut across different areas, different countries. So it doesn't matter whether you are in Uganda, that is in Africa, it doesn't matter whether you are in USA, it doesn't matter whether you are in Brazil, it doesn't matter whether you are China. If an offense is committed, then that is labeled to be a crime. So today I want to talk to us about criminal law. Commission of the crime. That is what I want to share with us about. There are some pertinent or primary things that you need to know about commission of a crime. And criminal law is basically a law that deals with punishment of offenders. That it is a law that deals with punishment of offenders. Every person who commits an offense, in most cases, is punished under what we call criminal law. And criminal law arises from what we call a crime. A crime, which literally means that society has different laws that have been put in place. Maybe for human conduct, for regulation of conduct. So if a person goes ahead and commits or breaches those acts, then he's deemed to be a criminal and he will have committed a crime. So, which literally means that a crime is an act or omission that is punishable under a given law. That a crime is an act or omission that constitutes a punishment of course after having committed it so in a world of criminal anyone can be a suspect at a given point in time that is why as an individual as a right citizen of a given country you need to know laws concerning crime in a given state so that you will not have an excuse if you happen to commit an offense it is very important for you to know the laws governing a given state be it america be it south africa be it sudan be it uganda it doesn't matter where you are but what is important for you to know is for you to at least be able to appreciate the jurisdiction of the area the laws that govern crimes so that you may end up you may not end up in prison it is very important and when we are in the in the criminal world it is important for you to note actually i'm talking to ugandans ignorance of the law is not a defense it is a section in the penal code act when you happen to commit a crime, you cannot plead that I didn't know about that law. You cannot say that I defiled someone, but I didn't know that there was a law in defilement. You cannot say that I went with something, and you're saying that I didn't know that there was a law about theft. You need to know all laws, if possible. That is why I'm talking to you about crimes today. That is why I'm before you to talk to you about criminal law. It is important for you 
put about commission of a crime. Students of law, one of the subjects that is very important is criminal law. For you to be able to appreciate about the laws concerning commissions of crime, it is very important. Because that is the only way you can be able to know about charging someone. That is the only way you can be about you can know about investigations of police. That is how you can know about taking a person to court. So it is very important for you to learn about criminal law. One another thing you have to know about criminal law is proof. Proof of a case. In criminal law is beyond reasonable doubt when you go before a judge when you go before a magistrate you have to prove that case beyond reasonable doubt which literally means that you need to organize your facts and issues well you need to organize your facts and issues well you need to organize your evidence well. Because remember, a magistrate or a judge is a third party. This is a party who was not there at a time when a crime was being committed, which makes him a neutral person. That makes him a neutral person. And it gives him the discretion to be able to know that the state has proved this case beyond reasonable doubt. So beyond reasonable doubt is you leading evidence between magistrate or judge to the point that without any shadow of doubt, he will be able to believe what you have presented before him that indeed the choose the person committed the same offense. And that is a process. Such a process is referred to as what we call the prosecution process, where you need to prove a case beyond reasonable doubt. And there are cases that we think. You can go to Google and you look for the case of you of, of Wilmington versus DPP, where the principle on beyond reasonable doubt, where the burden of proof in criminal law was talked about. That principle was well stated in the case of Wilmington versus DPP. So that is the proof in criminal law. And I also want to talk about another important fact. The types of offenses. The type of offenses. And I want to limit myself particularly here to the Ugandan law. When it comes to Uganda, we have a number of offenses. But I want to limit myself to to particular one. Number one, in criminal law or in commission of a crime, we have what we call capital offenses. A capital offense. A capital offense is an offense of a grave nature. An offense which goes deep. Sometimes it may lead to taking of a life of a human being. Sometimes it may lead, it may lead to affection of the public. Sometimes it may lead to the affection of a person's psychological psy psychology, a person's psychology. Someone becomes psychologically tortured because of the offense that was committed of an individual, by an individual. That is what we mean by a capital offense. And some of the capital offenses we have include the following. We have the offense of rape, whereby a male goes ahead and has carnal knowledge. He goes ahead and has sexual intercourse with a woman above 18 years without her consent. That is the offense of rape. We have another offense of defilement, whereby a man has sexual intercourse with a girl 
below the age of majority, which age of majority in Uganda is 18 years. That is an offense of defilement. And we have other offenses, like aggravated robbery. Aggravated robbery. Robbery which involves killing of people. We have offenses like treason. Offenses like treason. All of those are capital offenses. And what you need to know as an individual is that capital offenses are triable in high court. Capital offenses are triable in high court. And in Uganda, the high court has overall jurisdiction when it comes to all matters in Uganda, except constitutional petitions and presidential petitions. But when it comes to other matters, all of those matters are triable in high court. And then number two, we have what we call lesser offenses. Offenses which are not grave. Offenses which may not lead to death. Offenses which may lead to what we call misdemeanor. Offenses what may be what are termed as felonies. Felon is in law, that is a legal word, a felon, a small offense, that's what I mean by talking about that, felon, felonious offenses. And those are offenses that are tried in magistrate courts. When I talk about magistrate courts, I'm literally talking about the lower courts, and a magistrate court is headed by a chief magistrate. So. All of those offenses are triable in magistrate courts. So when a person commits what we call a capital offense, he's arraigned before a magistrate, and of course the magistrate will submit to the effect that this is a capital offense that is triable in high court. So which literally means that that person will be committed to high court and that is where he will be tried for a given capital offense. So it is very important for you to understand about the different types of offenses. It helps. Right now you are not a criminal but my dear at any time in this world anything can happen but it is important for you to understand about the criminal world. So someone can ask, so what happens after someone committing an offense? What do you do when an offense is committed? When you see that someone has, someone has committed an offense, where do you run to? I know so many of you have seen people committing offenses. People slapping other people. People trespassing onto other people's land. People knocking other people's vehicles. People killing others, people indecently attaching others. And what have you done about it? Some of you have kept about have kept quiet about it. Some of you have kept quiet about it. Sexual harassment. What amounts to that? Where do you run to? So when a person commits an offense, or when you see a person committing an offense, the first place which you run to is police. So you run to police and you report a crime that so and so has committed a crime. So what will police do? When you go to police and you report, they will enter that in the criminal book. There is a book at police where they will enter that particular crime that has been committed. And you will be given a number, what we call a police file number. And after that, police will begin to carry out investigations into that which you have reported. It will carry out investigations. And this, it, these investigations are supposed to be independent. They're supposed to be independent. For example, 
it, it is an offense of the firemen. Police will open up a fire, it will go and arrest the suspect and they put him in police custody and then they will begin carrying out investigations into the alleged the firemen. So when they begin carrying out investigation, the reason as to why, even if a person is caught in the act, police are saying that they are still carrying out investigations. People sometimes are puzzled about that statement. When you go and the person is caught in the act and then police is saying that don't worry, we are still carrying out investigations. They are looking for evidence that they will arraign in court against this person. That is the reason for investigation. So after reporting a case and getting a file, police carries out investigations into the matter. For example, if it is the firemen, they will arrest the suspect. And then they will also get hold of the victim. And the victim will have to be taken to hospital so that she may be examined by a doctor. They will have to examine her sexual organ to find out whether there was penetration of the sexual organ. To find out whether she was used by the suspect. Whether there was a rupture of the hymen. I'm being a lawyer here and I'm not shy about talking about some of these things. So you'll have to bear with me. So, they will carry out, the doctor will carry out a test and then we'll come up with the recommendations and in what we call a doctor's report. Either agreeing to the fact that she was, she was defiled and probably the suspect left semen and then his DNA will have to be checked to prove that there is a link between what was found in the girl and what is in his blood. I think you can see how police builds a file. Now, after getting that report, police will go and meet the different people who may have seen the suspect together with the victim and get statements from them. It may even visit the scene of the crime where he committed the defilement from and maybe get bedsheets which have blood and be able to prove whether that blood is of the victim and whether it was, it's also his blood. That is what we mean by building a file. That is what we mean by getting what we call a chain of evidence. So after police gathering all the information, it originates what we call a charge. And because this is an offense triable in high court, it will come up with what we call an indictment. An indictment is a document that is used to charge offenders in high court. It will come up with an indictment detailing the sections that have been breached of the Penal Code Act. And then thereafter, the file will be, will be sent to a government lawyer. The government lawyer will peruse the file. He will look through the evidence on file together with attachments. He will also look at the charges that have been made against the suspect. And then, if he deems it fit, he will sanction the file. After sanctioning of the file, it will be sent to the register of court who will assign it to a particular magistrate. And the magistrate will commit that person to high court because the fireman is an offense triable in high court. So there is a lot we can learn about criminal law. And that is what we are going to be centering on in the second half of 2022. We want to talk about commission of crime. At some point in time, I'm going to call in experts so that we can have talks with them about crimes, about different things in law. Once again, I would like to thank you for watching me. For I know that you've learned something. I know that my students have learned about criminal law. And do not hesitate to get in touch with me in case of any problem. Do not hesitate. You can call me. 
you can send me a WhatsApp. And if you find this useful, share it with another student. Share it with another person. Subscribe. Ring that bell so that you can be able to get any other video uploads. May the good Lord bless you.